The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is a German film released in 1920 that took the film industry by surprise through its use of bizarre sets and strange character developments representing the melancholy of post-World War I Germany. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari was a huge frontier in film thanks to the way it changed what was socially acceptable for movies at the time, and it has continued to change and influence cinema even today. In 1888, the very first film was created. It was simplistic, lacking color and sound, and it was only two seconds long. Within years, cinematography grew immensely. A basic version of color film was introduced in 1908, and the use of color in cinema progressed from being hand-drawn by artists to shadows and highlights created by machine. Sound began simply as music audio, but in 1927, the first film with synced sound dialogue was created. Within years, films had developed from silent, second-long black-and-white films to hour-long movies featuring color and sound. There are few genres of film, despite the increase in its popularity, the most popular being westerns, comedies, and epics. At the same time, German historicism was experiencing a crisis in which many German historians were afraid that Germany's culture and history would be forgotten. Their solution to this issue was unique. They began the German Expressionist movement. Starting in 1905, artists and composers attempted to preserve their country's history by creating pieces of music and art that conveyed current public emotion and reality in a distorted and emotive way. These fine arts were designed to encourage viewers and listeners to rethink historical reality while preserving elements of German culture. The German Expressionist movement continued to grow in popularity throughout the decade. Hundreds of artworks and pieces of music had been created by the time the movement started to die out in the mid-1910s. When World War I started in 1914, German Expressionism as a whole was almost completely eradicated. As the war progressed, a film ban was placed on Germany, preventing any type of movie or video to be exported from the country. Additionally, many anti-German propaganda films were released from other countries, giving Germany a bad name and creating tension within the German government. Due to the fear and dislike associated with Germany during the war, a German general by the name of Erich Ludendorff founded a film company in 1917 called the Universum Film Echting Gesellschaft, or UFA, which loosely translates to the Universal Film Joint Stock Company. Ludendorff hoped that UFA would develop successful films that could improve the country's current post-World War I financial, economic, and social crises. When the war ended in November of 1918, the film ban on Germany was lifted and UFA became the single largest film studio in Europe. UFA released Das Cabinet des Dr. Caligari, or The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, on February 26, 1920, bringing the company its first artistic acclaim. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari follows Alan and Francis, two friends, as they encounter the crazed Dr. Caligari at a fair. Caligari claims that he has a hypnotized somnambulist, or sleepwalker, named Caesar, who can see into the future. Unexpectedly, Caesar predicts Alan's death, and when Alan is found murdered the next day, it sets off a string of killings that Francis must investigate. It is later discovered that Dr. Caligari is controlling Caesar to kill for him. The film ends with a huge plot twist, where it is revealed that Francis is actually insane, and he had imagined everything while being treated in an insane asylum. People found the movie intriguing because it looked nothing like the real world, yet represented current controversial aspects of reality. In order to create this warped sense of reality throughout the film, director Robert Whedon's crew utilized surrealist production design to give the film an unrealistic, nightmarish quality, creating an aura of fear and anxiety directly affecting the viewer. Everything from the floor to the ceiling was incredibly distorted. The film had extra shadows painted around the sets, and although the shadows were simply a result of the low budget, they played a huge role in the visual effects that made the movie so popular. The sets helped to convey the feelings of discontent, foreboding, and confusion that were prevalent in the characters of the film. These feelings reflected the viewer's own, mirroring the current state of Germany after losing World War I. The idea that everything was happening inside of Francis's head is suggested to represent the trauma and mistrust that had developed in citizens of Germany after World War I. Hayden White, an American historian, has called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari an ironic mode of histography in which a mode made aware of the relativity of all values and conscious of the problematics of narration is present. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari also reflected the thoughts and fears for the future of Germany, specifically through the moods of paranoia shown throughout the characters and through the sets of the film. Some viewers saw the movie as a political analogy of the social and moral collapse of Germany after the war due to the parts of the movie where a madman is on the loose, killing and spreading fear in a distorted and imbalanced society. 
Because of this, the post-war connections and the hidden political analogies, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari was later classified as a German Expressionist film and is still considered one of the best of the movement. When The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari was first released in Germany, it didn't take well to the public. It was first premiered in Marmor House Theater in Berlin on February 26th of 1920, but it was only shown twice after viewers demanded refunds and expressed extreme dislike towards the film. However, after six months of publicity work utilizing newspaper ads and eye-catching posters, the film was shown again in the same theater, this time to high praise. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari was translated into English and imported to America, being officially released in the U.S. on March 19th of 1921. Within years, dozens of other movies were released using expressionist themes and elements first seen in The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. In 1922, Nosferatu was released in Germany, using elaborate sets to create quasi-surrealist and dreamlike imagery, the same technique originally seen in The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Many movies followed, such as Waxworks in 1924, Metropolis in 1927, and The Man Who Laughs in 1928. The once-dead German Expressionist movement was revitalized across America and Germany through Expressionist films. Although some movies were more direct examples of Expressionism, many films released in the future had an Expressionist element, whether it be the use of line, angle, and depth to create mood, or perhaps hidden real-world connections or metaphors within the storyline. For decades, German Expressionism became a staple in cinema, increasing popularity in genres such as horror and film noir, and introducing new ways to portray human emotion on screen. Throughout the 30s and 40s, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari's influence could be seen in many film noir and horror movies, such as Frankenstein, The Cat People, and The Maltese Falcon. Over a century after the cabinet of Dr. Caligari's release, elements, themes, and ideas of German Expressionism can still be found in modern cinema. Expressionistic concepts have become so mainstream, movies and TV shows are still being released reflecting the ideas first seen in the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Some directors, one of the most well-known being Tim Burton, have adopted the expressionist style and used it often. In 1993, Burton released The Nightmare Before Christmas, using obscure angles, contorted lines, and disorienting contrast to express emotion and mood within the film, similarly to the way Ween did in The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Burton's other works, such as Edward Scissorhands and Corpse Bride, are also examples of modern-day German expressionism and how the movie seeks to create an emotional experience rather than realistically represent the world. Other directors used and continue to use expressionist techniques within their productions. For example, Todd Phillips' 2019 film adaption of the famous Batman villain Joker was directly inspired by the 1928 expressionist film The Man Who Laughs. Its expressionistic elements are most obvious in the Joker's character design and costumes. A recent example of German Expressionism today is Tim Burton's hit TV show Wednesday, with its dark themes and unique style of expression. Dozens of other movies, such as Batman Returns, The Babadook, Pan's Labyrinth, Shutter Island, and Beetlejuice, are all examples of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari's power to create a new generation of Expressionism. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari has changed modern cinema in countless ways. A single silent film from 1920 helped develop the basis of creating mood, specifically in horror, by utilizing line, depth, contrast, and light that can still be seen in cinematography today. Thanks to The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, the genres of horror and film noir are increasingly popular, light, shadow, and contrast have become an incredibly vital part of creating mood in every genre of movie, emotion can be expressed in ways other than words, and what is considered possible within cinematic expressionism has grown to what it is today.